Hi, Jerry Corley, StandUpComedyClinic.com with another episode of Ask the Joke Doctor. In this episode, I'm going to discuss a tweet I got from somebody on Twitter asking me, hey, if there is no converging idea or dissimilar idea in the setup, is the listening technique obsolete? And if so, how do you get to the joke? I know that's a lot to swallow, but that's what we're covering today on Ask the Joke Doctor. In this episode, I'm going to discuss a question I got via Twitter uh, from one of my followers. Uh, that question was, uh, hey, Jerry, um, that doesn't have two disparate ideas, so listening technique not possible and doesn't conjure up, conjure up many references. That was from Damian Brady. Thanks, Damian, for the question. Uh, actually, um, so let me sort of clarify what he meant. Uh, in comedy, one of, the one of the easiest ways to write jokes is having uh, an idea that has two clearly identifiable ideas converging. It's called the incongruity uh, technique. Uh, one, that's one definition of a joke, two dissimilar ideas converging. Now, some sentences or some headlines or some news stories don't seem to have those two clearly identifiable ideas converging. So what do you do in that situation? One of the things I like to do is introduce a celebrity. Now, if I introduce a celebrity that's counterintuitive to the situation, then I'll have two dissimilar ideas converging automatically. So in this particular news story that came up, it was a local news story here in LA, it said millions of fish washed up in the harbor around Redondo Beach. Now to me, yes, there's dissimilar ideas in that there's fish, harbor, Redondo Beach, but it's all kind of the same concept, fish and water, not dissimilar, really. Uh, Redondo Beach, same thing. Now, if Redondo Beach was famous for its pollution, uh, we, we can have some jokes that it's a beach is supposed to be natural and uh, organic, but a beach is filled with pollution, then it's not really natural or, or organic. Therefore, you have those two dissimilar ideas converging. But in this case, there's nothing popping out in my mind. Now, as a writer, I love these types of things because I know if I'm on staff somewhere, the other writers aren't really going to try to tackle this because it doesn't have two clearly identifiable ideas converging. So what I like to do is introduce a celebrity to the mix. So if I had millions of fish washed up in the harbor around Redondo Beach, I think to myself, what's going on there? Um, I'll probably go through um, the maxim of the five W's, who, what, where, why, when, and how. Now, this particular news story had images. So it had a picture and it showed these fish like five feet deep in the harbor, washed up, dead. So it was like, uh, I could imagine what the, what the what would be, would be smell, right? So uh, smell, and I thought, who is this, uh, what is smell? The smell of fish. And I thought, what celebrity would be good to inject into this equation that uh, would smell like fish? And I thought, mm, Kirstie Alley. Just popped into my head. Now I love Kirstie Alley, and I'm sure she doesn't smell like fish. But if I can conjure the image of a sweaty Kirstie, maybe it can come up with a, a joke dealing with that. Uh, normally, I wouldn't go that direction, but I thought if I word it cleverly, it would be funny. So the joke went, uh, millions of fish washed up in the harbor around Redondo Beach. There's some good news and there's some bad news. The bad news is it's going to take weeks to clean that mess up. The good news is now the layperson knows what it smells like when Kirstie Alley sunbathes nude. Now, at that time, Kirstie was on Dancing with the Stars. So uh, I continue with the joke by saying, uh, did you see uh, Kirstie on Dancing with the Stars last night? Boy, she can shake that ass. Last night she shook it so hard she wound up on the first 10 minutes of How I Met Your Mother. So out of that particular line, I come up with two solid jokes that deal with, uh, that, uh, by introducing the celebrity. But it all started with millions of fish washing up around on, in the harbor around Redondo Beach. There are also other ways to get to a joke. Now, one time I was asked to write some jokes about Doha, Qatar. Uh, there was a celebrity going to Doha, Qatar to meet her fiance. She asked me to write some jokes about Doha, Qatar. Now, I don't know anything about Doha, Qatar. And when she said that to me, I didn't even know what it was. And uh, I had to say, what is Doha, Qatar? She says, it's a city in, Do in Qatar. Doha is, a, is the capital of Qatar. Qatar is in 
in the Arabic uh, region. So I said, okay, Doha, Qatar. So I went home and went on the internet and I looked up facts about Doha, Qatar. Now that's important, facts about Doha, Qatar. Every one of those facts becomes a potential either piece of fodder that's going to show up in a joke or it's a potential straight line for a joke. Just take a fact, make a joke. And many times you're going to have two dissimilar ideas converging. So in this particular, my research turned up that uh, Doha, Qatar, or Qatar is one of the most progressive uh, nations in the Arabic region. And I also knew that uh, in many Arabic countries, if you steal something, they cut off your hand, right? So I thought, uh, uh, Doha, Qatar. Qatar is one of the most progressive countries in the Arabic region. Like if you steal something, they still cut off your hand, but they let you keep it. So now there's one joke that came out of that. Also, another joke that came out of that was looking again at the pictures and the imagery in Qatar. Uh, I also looked up a video about Qatar and I saw something very interesting. There was a woman walking around, a Muslim woman in her, in her head cover, um, full head cover, sort of a veil here, and she was on a cell phone. And I thought that was really interesting. Now the two dissimilar ideas or the incongruity doesn't just need to be in the words. It can also be in the imagery, right? So in this case, uh, this woman is on modern technology but based and has the veil on, sort of the traditional veil. Uh, so basically modern, modernization meets antiquity, right? So you have massive incongruity right there. So I said, uh, so as basically that's what I said. So it, the, the joke became, well, I was walking around Qatar and I was like, women in veils. I was like, wow, this is like the traditional head cover. And I said, while they were also talking on their cell phones, as a, as a modernization meets antiquity. Antiquity. Not only that, their their uh, their faces had better coverage than their phones. So you get a joke out of that as well. Now that's so we go through. We have uh, introduce a celebrity as a possibility or a common uh, phrase or a, a place that's famous. Number two, you can just do the listing and utilize the facts in something to create setups or create ideas for jokes that then maybe the fact will have two dissimilar ideas converging. Another way to do it, and it's a very popular way to do that sort of thing, is using analogy. Now, one of the most famous comedians right now is Bill Burr. Bill Burr uses analogy all the time. That is his main go-to when he gets, when he's doing jokes. Bill Burr will rant, and one of the ways he finds the funny is to use an is-like or an analogy. You know, it's like this, it's like this, it's like this. He, if you watch a Bill Burr video, he uses his like all the time. And once he introduces that second idea, that's where the joke comes from. Back, he did a, uh, he did a bit, uh, it was called, uh, gold, I call it gold digging whores, right? He's talking about, uh, about women who are gold diggers. And then he also talks about men. And he says, um, he talked about Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, getting in trouble with his housekeeper. And then he says, um, uh, but nobody ever investigates it. Nobody explores this idea that, uh, you know, when women do something, it's not a big deal. But when men do something, it's, they, they get in trouble. It's like, um, like the only article I found about it was on Time magazine. And it, it said, uh, it, it was written by a woman. woman. And it said, um, why do so many rich and fa powerful men uh, end up as being such pigs, or something like that. And he says, like, uh, and it was written by a woman. He's like, uh, he's like, that's like me writing, writing a book. I mean, she doesn't know anything about what it's like to have a dick. That's like me writing a book. What to expect in your third trimester? Well, ladies, you're going to feel a pressure. So all he said was, that's like me writing a book saying uh, what, what to expect in your third trimester, and then he does the act out, ladies, you're going to feel a pressure. Gets a laugh there. So there's one joke. Then he continues. He goes, that's because, you know, your dick will get you in trouble. Your dick, you know, uh, dick is like six inches, uh, will get you, six inches will get you in, in trouble um, uh, all the time. See, and here's the problem, because your dick is like a dreamer. Your dick is like a motivational speaker, is what he says. You know, he's always like, yeah, we could do this, no problem. Exit strategy, later. He said, then when, what, where's your dick when you get caught? It's just hunched over going, yeah, I thought it was a good idea. 
So what he did was he just did, did an analogy. Your dick is like a dreamer. And in his brain, he's going through these possibilities. Your dick is like a motivational speaker. And then he acts out, what would a motivational speaker say if he was a dick? He'd say, hey, let's go tap these women. Let's go get laid. And then what, what happened? Where's your dick when you get caught? Hunched over saying, yeah, I thought it was a good idea. Right? Just, that's funny because... It's coincidental that that's kind of where your dick is when you're done, just kind of slopped over, right? And also, um, that's kind of what a dick does, is, hey, let's go do this, and then doesn't want to be, is not responsible for it if the woman gets pregnant or if you get caught. So it's a great joke using an analogy. And analogy is a masterful way to get to jokes. Just do is-likes. You've probably heard me do the is-likes when you go, sex is a lot like going to the gym. Right? My girlfriend's like an egg. All of these simple analogies can get you to jokes because you begin using the analogy, you can introduce that secondary idea and now you do the listing technique and you can have tons of jokes. So number one, the listing technique is not just for two dissimilar ideas. You can just take one idea and do a bunch of listing on it and eventually you could find something that inspires you or you write some facts and those facts might have two dissimilar ideas in them. But by doing the listening technique, maybe you get to the facts. Number two, you can uh, introduce a celebrity if you don't have two dissimilar ideas. Number three, you can utilize analogy if you have two dissimilar ideas. So three big ways you can take a line or a joke or a fact and it doesn't seem to have two converging ideas and then come up with a secondary idea so you can then juxtapose them and get the laugh. So I hope this was helpful uh, for you to get to where you want to be with this particular joke uh, or joke style. If you, there's really no, nothing ever holding you back. There are so many other ways you can get to the joke if you only have one word or you have one idea and you don't have two converging ideas. Uh, and we'll get to that in another video. So I hope these three ideas kind of helped you out and give you something to work with. If you want more ideas and go into depth, get my book, Breaking Comedy's DNA. It's available, you'll see it in the description below. We go into depth on how to uh, break apart lines or take simple lines or simple words and come up with the jokes. So once again, I hope this video brought you value. I wanted to get this out to Damien because he uh, tweeted such an interesting concept or an interesting idea. I wanted to sort of answer that right away so he can get to more and start writing more and more jokes. So um, once again, I hope this... Um, served you well. I hope you got some value from this. And if you have any other questions dealing with comedy, hit me up on Twitter. My handle is at Joke Doctor. And ask the question and then hashtag it with Ask the Joke Doctor. And I'll be sure to answer the question in a video just like this one. Uh, once again, hope this helped. Um, I'm tired. I've been up all, uh, all day, all night. And I'm going to get a little sleep tonight. I uh, have some big shows tomorrow, and uh, I hope you're doing well, and hope you're hitting the clubs by, uh, as well, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.